Hey everybody and welcome to Genre Chat. I'm Kayla Bolton and uh, this is my guest for the night, uh, Sherry Lynn Visbano. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Caleb. I hear you have thunderstorms and tornado launches where you are. Yes, you can hear the thunder in the background probably. So we're going to cross our fingers and hope that the, the internet holds out so we can get everything <laughs> done. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, we're going to be talking about book proposals today. I know that's kind of your specialty, but before I, I jump into it, tell me a little bit more about yourself, what you do and how you got started in the industry. Well, about four years ago, I started praying and wondering if God even wanted me to write. I'm a speaker. Mm -hmm. People would ask me for my speaking notes in a book forum, like I'm not a writer, I'm a speaker. And I would talk to Lori Roloveld, who's a phenomenal writer. She's got some great books out. She actually teaches at Blue Ridge and some other conferences she's taught at. Um, she said, well, why don't you go to the New England Christian Writing Retreat? and pray while you're there and see what it's all about and ask God to show you. Well, I went to that retreat. There were people like uh, Cecil Murphy was there. I didn't even know who he was, but he gave me a kick in the butt and said, just write. And I took that as my, you know, as uh, it's my launch to write. And since then, Kyle Young uh, started a website called Almost an Author. We're celebrating three years next month. Um, he believed in me to write a column on magazine article writing. And the one thing that I remembered at Blue Ridge when I went in 2015 was if somebody asks you to write something, you write it. Even if you know nothing about it, you can research it mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't go against your moral principles. So when Kyle asked me to write for A3, I wanted to do a devotion column. You know, I'm a Bible teacher. I wanted to do a devotion column. He says, I have enough of those. I need magazine article. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I wrote some articles. He asked me to be the managing editor. Um, after a few months, I became the managing editor. And then he asked me to do submissions reading for Heartline because he works for Heartline. He's an agent there. And then I became a junior agent. And as a submissions reader and a junior agent, I noticed that book proposals needed a lot of work. And I know it's not that authors don't want to know how to write a book proposal and that there's not a lot of information. It's just there's not a lot of information in one place. Mm -hmm. And when you go to submission guidelines, those guidelines don't give you the details. And so I said, you know, I, I prayed about it. And the Lord put it on my heart to start a book proposal business. Mm -hmm. So I stepped down from being managing editor of almost an author. I stepped down as a junior agent and I stepped down as a submissions reader. And now I solely do book proposals. I do write as well, mm -hmm. but um, I, I just want to help people get their best foot into the door because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of great ideas for books but the book proposals were not, they would never have been accepted. Mm -hmm. So if I can help them do that, uh, that's what I want to do. And I've been doing that since Easter of this year, and which was April 1st. I figured <laughs> it would be easy to remember. Um, and I, it hasn't been a foolish decision. And my career was resurrected. My new career is uh, owning my own business. The, the right proposal. I love it. Um, -E. <laughs> yeah, W R I T E. Yeah. And I have, I do, I have written. I've got um, mostly in compilation books, mm -hmm. Chicken Soup for the Soul, Miracles, and More book. I'm in Heart Reno, and I'm also in uh, Breaking the Chains. Yeah, uh, I do, do a lot. That was amazing. It really was. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I've written. I write for Blue Ridge. Uh, their blog. I also do a, a book proposal column for almost an author and I've been in some other other online magazines. I just, my goal is to help people. Mm -hmm. I want to see people get published because there's a lot of great messages out there, whether it be fiction, nonfiction, children's mm -hmm. books. There's a lot of great stuff out there, Caleb. 
And that's the thing also that you have that on your heart. And, hope that, and I know, you know, in every genre, no matter what genre you're writing in, a, a quality book proposal is, is going to do just that, help you get in the door. Tell me a little bit, what, what's the difference in, let's say, a book proposal for nonfiction or fiction or even, even children's books? How would, how would they look differently for each genre? Well, let's talk about fiction and nonfiction first. A children's books are a whole different entity, but the difference in, in a fiction and a nonfiction book proposal, they're, they're almost pretty much the same, except when you do uh, your, in a book proposal, you have to um, do a synopsis for a fiction book. Mm -hmm. That synopsis is like one to three pages long. With a fiction book, it's a chapter by chapter outline. Mm -hmm. So they want to know what's in each chapter. With a fiction book, your whole book has to be written before you can submit your proposal. Mm -hmm. With a nonfiction book, they prefer you not to have the whole book written in case they want to take it in a different on a different slant okay um with a fiction proposal they want you to have your first three chapters because the book has to make the story has to make sense with a non-fiction proposal they want you to have your first chapter and or th your three best chapters. They usually ask to include the first chapter. But um, the best, my recommendation for everybody is to look at the guidelines. Wherever you want to submit, if, you, if you're looking for an agent, go to that agent and look at their guidelines. Because some people don't ask Mm -hmm. for everything in the proposal they don't ask for your um they don't ask for a lot of the things i know like with kyle he asks for your biography he asks for just a small writing sample and he wants your marketing plan mm -hmm. marketing plans are huge with book proposals now, so what now that as far as your marketing plan? how extensive would that be i mean just your your ideas of how you want to do it or a step-by-step -step? layout both <laughs> um the thing with the thing with a marketing plan is they do not want you to say i will do this i will do that they want you doing it now if if you're watching this and you're writing your book now start marketing it now that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing we can talk about another time um, and if you want any points or tips, you can actually go watch my book proposal out guideline um, at Almost an Author or Serious Writer. Mm -hmm. But you should start marketing your book the minute you start writing it. And I think that's something a lot of people miss. I think they start, they're going to start marketing it when they finish it and then when they get... Well, Molly Jo, Molly Jo really is doing a really good job. Uh, she's getting people involved in the writing process. Her book's not done, mm -hmm. but she's her book's called No Law, which I never knew what that meant until I started following her and reading about her book. And she's saying, do you want to know what this character's going to do or do you want to wait till the book comes out? Mm -hmm. She's doing a really good job. She holds writing sessions. So, and I think you're invested in it too. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I get, I'm invested in her book and she's not even completed with it yet. So she's doing a good job. It so really for, We've got a whole, whole host of people that are going to, cannot wait to buy it and publicize it. And you're right. She, she hasn't even got Because she's been doing this for a while and she, her book's not even done. And so that's good. And we can talk about marketing at another time, but since this is genre chat, let's go to children's books. Mm -hmm. There's picture books. There's, um, there's different, you know, children's book. I consider a picture books, you know, from, from ba infant to maybe five years old. Then you get into middle grade and YA, which the middle grade and YA you would handle like a fiction book. Okay. But any children's book, they want, it has to be outlined page by page, mm -hmm. section by section. 
and they want to know what's going to be on each page. You don't necessarily have to have an illustration. Mm -hmm. If you have your own illustrator and your illustrator is good and the agent or publisher like them, then you can keep it. But they want each, it's like a little, it's almost like a storyboard. Mm -hmm. Each page is its own storyboard. And most children's books, I believe, are 32 to 36 pages long, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So a children's book is much different. So in the proposal, you would do, um, you would, of course, you know who it's marketed to, but instead of having a chapter by chapter outline or a synopsis, you would have like that storybook, what's on each page, mm -hmm. like what is actually going to be written. We're doing, I'm doing a picture book for somebody and each page is just going to have a picture with one word, mm -hmm. but it's going to be powerful. And then I'm helping somebody do uh, an ABC book. So we, we have like A is for adoption and a B, we would put B, B is, you know, we didn't put B as four, but what we would have on B, what we would have on page C. So it would be, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. 26 to 34 pages because we're going to have an introduction. Mm -hmm. But, and then you would describe what you want on each page. And if you don't have an illustrator, you would, you would, you would tell them what you're expecting for each page, what you're, what you're thinking, but you have to be willing to allow the publisher to say, I see it this way and maybe change up the words. So book proposals over different genres. I mean, in your book proposal, you want to, there's a competitive analysis. And what that is, is what other books are in that genre that are like yours. Okay. Now you can go to Amazon and Amazon is really, can get, get really specific. You can go, you can go fiction, uh, let's say Western romance, you know, ro uh, it's a Western suspense romance. You could go suspense romance, mm -hmm. Western, and maybe even go down to a certain state. I don't know, but <laughs> sometimes it, the genre gets really, really specific. Mm -hmm. And if there isn't anything that specific, you make sure you, you let them know that, but you find books in your genre within the last five years, mm -hmm. maybe seven, but five years. And you compare and contrast your book to those. Never put down another book, um, but always find it in your specific genre. Because if, if you're showing the publisher that that genre sells and yours is just a little bit different and why and why it would be better, that that's going to help more in your book proposal. Mm -hmm. Now with kids books, what I would do is I would go, um, my agent, Kyle Young tell, also tells us go to the bookstore and see what's on the shelf mm -hmm. where your book would be. If your book was in borders or wherever else, um, and look what's on that shelf. And for kids books, like if I'm helping with an ABC book, go and look at all the ABC books as well. Mm -hmm. but there there are subtle differences in there's subtle differences in in the book proposals um i'd be willing to help people with that i i like to um i mean they can contact me at editor at the right proposal.com w r i t e proposal.com um i i i answer questions for free. I do a 30 minute free consult with people because I want to help people get their, uh, the best book forward. A professional what, proposal. You that's most uh, helping people at the beginning, when they're starting out as a writer or when they're starting out in the process of getting published. What's, what is it that, that makes it so much more meaningful to you doing that? I guess, some people might not believe me, but I would rather see other people get published than myself. Mm -hmm. I guess that's just a gift that God gave me as a gift of helps and compassion. And I love helping other people. I love when other people succeed. I love being part of that. And I don't even need to be acknowledged. 
it's like a high five between me and God, like, yay. <laughs> and it, it, I'm like, it's so high five between me and God. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like to encourage people. Um, I've been, I've had some very low times in my life and I've had people come alongside me, encourage me, but at my lowest times, I never had anybody. Mm -hmm. I had, I had the Lord, but I want to encourage people to be all they can be. Mm -hmm. And we have some really, really good writers in the genre chat circles and the serious writer circles. I mean, Kyle and Bethany and Michelle and even Stephen James is part of Serious Writer. They meet some really talented writers. And we all get in a funk sometimes where we feel like, I can't do this, or how do I do this? Or I have this great idea, but how do I flush it out? How do I, how do I even, you know, me from the very beginning, mm -hmm. I want to share something funny with you. When I, my first writer's conference, I rose my hand in Cecil Murphy's class. And I said, you guys can laugh at me, but what is a protagonist? <laughs> That's how new I was. I didn't even know what a protagonist was. I mean, I didn't take, I, I took creative writing in, in college, but I didn't, you know, it was creative writing. It wasn't like a novel or anything like that. And he was so sweet. He, he was so sweet. And he told me what it was. But I had people like him, him. And I took Jerry Jenkins' um, online course. I had people like Kyle um, just come up beside me and help me. And at Blue Ridge and other conferences, just come up beside me and help me and guide me. You know, Suzanne and Sean Kuhn from Suzy Q. I mean, I've had some really great people help me and I'm, I want to help others. I've had people invest in me and I still need people to invest in me. <laughs> but I want to take that and give back. That's what so I that's, that's what I want to do. And, and I, I'm doing something different now. So I want to, like, with you, I mean, I saw what a, a, a personable person you were and a great personality you had and how much you love writers and how much you love writing and that you just want to soak it all in. Mm -hmm. It's like, he's a great person to take over genre chat. <laughs> <laughs> it just worked out perfectly. I'm, I'm really excited to be doing it. it. This is exactly the kind of thing uh, I enjoy. I enjoy people and I enjoy like-minded people and it's just, it is, it's a really great, it's a really great experience. And I'm glad you're, I'm glad you had that desire to help other people. How has this kind of thing, how has it helped you? How has looking at book proposals and, and learning more about the craft and teaching other people, how has that improved your own writing or your own method of doing things? Well, when I started the business, mm -hmm. I knew a little bit about book proposals, mm -hmm. but I, what, what this does is it spurs me on to be a better writer. It spurs me on to be a better person. I need to know what I'm talking about. So I put my, I mean, I've been reading, I've been studying, I've been watching videos. Um, it's made me a better writer. It's made me a better person. It's helped me to see my weaknesses so that I can surround myself with people who are better than me, who can help me. I have a great team. Mm -hmm. I have Crystal Phelps, who is, an, now she's an award-winning editor. She, some of her books at Blue Ridge, she edited some of those sale award-winning books. Um, she's great at editing. She's great at, you know, word, sentence, paragraph editing. Then I have Holland Webb, who is a copywriter, but nothing, nothing passes by him. Mm -hmm. You have one little, you know, if you forget a period, he'll, he'll find it. He, nothing, 
nothing goes by his eyes. And, and he's been in it. Really important that is. I've been reading a book and you say you, you know, somebody skipped punctuation and it completely pulls you out of the story. So, I mean, you yes. like that. And he's, and he's a great encourager. He, he, he sent me a quote by one of his friends that said, 95% of success is just doing it. So with my business, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep, keep growing. And when you surround yourself by people who are better than you, or you can aspire to be like, that's what I, that's what I do. And I'm learning from them. And, and then I'm helping people learn the book proposal business. Two years ago, I knew nothing about book. Well, Three years ago, I knew nothing about book proposals. Mm -hmm. Now I own my own business because I've studied and studied and studied and I've looked at them and I've learned good writing from bad writing by reading book proposals. Mm -hmm. I, like that. I like that a lot. What is the most that's kind of surprised you that you found out about book proposals that you didn't know when you started the business or when you started the process of, of going through them with people? I hate to say it, but out of all of the book proposals that I've read, there was only one that stood out. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want my personal book proposals to look like, but it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It is book proposals. If you want to write a good book proposal from beginning to end, just to write it, you've got to do the research and everything. It'll probably take 10 hours. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, didn't know. I didn't know it took, I, know. I didn't know how long it took. Um... Yeah, it takes a long time because you want to you want to format it properly. You want to you want to make sure you have everything the submissions calls for. Mm -hmm. You don't want to shortchange yourself by not putting everything down. You know, I had one book proposal that I mean I wrote I think I wrote this on my on one of, in one of my articles. Some people probably wouldn't put this in there but this, when I was reading the submission, this girl put that she won her third grade tri-state writing competition. Mm -hmm. Third grade tri-state writing competition. And I said, wow, she's been recognized since she was in the third grade mm -hmm. for her writing. I didn't look at it like, why is she putting the, her third grade stuff down? I looked at it like, wow. This person's been writing a long time and they've been recognized for their writing. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't hesitate to put stuff like that down. Um, other things that I've learned, I like reading book, people's book proposals because I learn a lot about them too. I learn more things about them. I'm like, wow, I didn't know they did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Or, and, and you learn, like I said, you learn good writing and you learn writing that needs improvement. I like that. Now, when you were working as a junior agent, how many book proposals did you see every every day? How many how many ones passed across your desk every day? Well, before when we had our first formatting where people could just send a book proposal, I probably anywhere I, I'd say in a week I'd see probably about thirty or forty. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it would be less. Sometimes it would be a lot more. And then we changed the format up. Kyle personally changed his format where he only wanted to see the marketing plan and a few, mm -hmm. a few certain things. And he had videos he wanted people to watch and then it dwindled. Mm -hmm. But I, cause I think people just don't want to do the work. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes not everybody, but sometimes it's your book proposal is I don't want to say more important, but sometimes more important than your book because you're not going to get your book sold if your book proposal isn't good. And if I would say spend a lot of time on your book proposal, a lot of time, do more editing in the beginning to your book proposal than you do your book. And if oh, I lost my train of thought, I had something, oh, um, for nonfiction, write your book proposal before you write your book. It will help you outline your book. 
that's what that's yeah. that's the consensus I got from a lot of people who who tr teach in book proposals and writing and stuff like that for nonfiction. Mm -hmm. But for fiction, no, you have to write the book first because we have to know what the ending is. Another tip. Your writing surprises you sometimes more than the reader. You're surprised at your own ending sometimes. Another, uh, I'm going to talk about fiction now. You have to give away the ending in your book proposal. <laughs> In your synopsis, they want to know, they don't want to know all the little tiny plots. Mm -hmm. They want to know who the protagonist is, the antagonist, what the challenge is or what the, the protagonist has to overcome, how they overcome it. Um, and they want to know the ending. They do. No, they only one found that some people would leave out or some people would not be very specific about it. I've had people say, I'm not giving you the ending because I don't want anybody to steal it. And I write back, well, they're not going to, nobody's going to take your book if they don't know what the ending is. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the most common mistakes that people made? I mean, besides just being, you know, unclear about what the ending is, what are some other common mistakes that you've seen? They, they don't address their cover letter to the right person or they tend to send it to a, multi, a multiple email addresses at the same time. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. They don't edit their book proposal. I mean, it has a lot of either spelling errors or grammatical errors, punctuation errors. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Oh, this is really simple. And I almost forgot to do this on my, on my personal book proposal. But when you have your table of contents, make sure that the pages match up with the pages in the proposal. Mm. Because if you edit or change it, and you don't go back and change your table of contents, I check that because that means attention to detail. It does. You're right. I will check that. You know, we'll do that at the end instead of the beginning. You know, do a rough. Right. And the table of contents in your book proposal is for your book proposal. It's not for your book. Now, have you seen some people do a table of contents for their book instead of for the book proposal? Have you, is that a mistake you've seen before? Yes. Wow. Yes. And I've seen people say, well, well, I won't mention who but they said well i know this person so i don't have to send my proposal or it always go by submission guidelines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always P even people like jerry jenkins cecil murphy they have to do book proposals you wouldn't think they'd have to you'd think oh their next book's going to be a number one anyway so why have a book proposal mm -hmm. they have to have book proposals too the publishers want them mm -hmm. and your numbers always have numbers. When you do your, when you do your marketing section, always have numbers. Um, even if your social media following is not a lot, put Facebook, uh, 400 and growing. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Um, people leave out things that people leave out stuff like, if you went to college, does your college have a newspaper or do they have a, uh, an email they send out to uh, the alumni? Do they have an alumni paper? If so, you can put a book release in that alumni paper, which probably goes out to 10,000 people. <laughs> people forget stuff like that, their church. There's so many places. And one thing, there is so much information on the World Wide Web that you could go look that up. Mm -hmm. Go to Austin author to my book proposal column. You can go to, there's um, Writer's Digest has some great stuff. Jane Friedman. Um, go to Edie Melson's, um, uh, what is that? The right, I can't remember. Edie Melson's uh, The Right Conversation, thank you. The Right Conversation or to the Blue Ridge. There's so many good places to get information to write book proposals. Mm -hmm. One thing that I, I, I highly recommend, if you're writing in a certain genre, 
if you're writing YA, like if you're my age and you're writing in YA, I can have grandkids with what, reading YA right now, I'll tell you that. So, I mean, but if I'm writing YA, you need to be where the YA people are. Mm -hmm. So YA people are really not on Facebook. They're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. They're on places like that. You need to be where your readers are. And you, and yeah, I, I can be a grandmother, but they might want to, they might like my writing. So be where they are. They're on Snapchat. They're on some, I, I don't think there's, they're really on Twitter, but they're on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. YA kids. Be where your readers are. There are some YA writers on Facebook. Get in a writing group specific to your genre mm -hmm. because then you have, it, the readers and the writers, because you're going to get them excited about your book. Like our friend, Molly Joe, I mean, she's starting it. She's maybe you can have her on here and talk, talk, have her talk about how to, how to get people interested in your genre because she, she's doing a great job. Honestly, uh -huh. before I started talking about the Nola Swarm pages and stuff like that, I didn't know what, a uh, uh, how does she phrase it? The, the genre, um, Mystery location. I didn't know that mystery location was, a, I mean, I knew, but I didn't know that it was a specific genre, you know, that, but I know a lot more about New Orleans and things just following her. She makes it, she makes you care about it. You know? See, and, and there's also historical fiction mm -hmm. too. And she could make it mystery location romance, however she does it. But that's, see, there's so many different genres. So she could actually, didn't she travel to New Orleans? Did she travel there? Yes, I think she did. Yeah, see? So she could, she could, there's so many different things you could do. Put on a marketing hat, brainstorm with your friends. People on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, wherever you go, ask them what they think because they want to be involved. Hey, what do you think I should, I have this character coming in to uh, one of my scenes. This is what they look like. This is their personality. What name should I choose? One, two, three, or four, or whatever. You know, it's it, people get involved, and if you choose their name, they're going to go buy the book. <laughs> you know, actually, Annette Eason did something similar to that with one of her novels. Um, she did a, a, a poll on, I forgot, I think it was Facebook or social media, about the restaurant name, the, the, the protagonist, yes. the story owned a chain of restaurants. And I remember that. Yeah, you know who else is, does a really good job? In, um, it's not just about selling books. It's mm -hmm. about making relationships. And That's who right. does that really well? We have a lot of people who do it well, but Diane Mills. Yes. Diane Mills, she doesn't just talk about book writing. She talks about a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And she gets people involved. She asks a question. And soon, I mean, she'll, she'll get a lot of followers doing that. I'm talking to one writer who I'm doing her book proposal, but I'm also giving her some, I, I'm counseling with her and coaching her. And I said, I got her to start a Facebook page and she's already got quite a few followers. She just started a blog. She's one of her blog posts of 20, 12,000 people. Wow. It's because she asks, because she asks questions. Mm -hmm. And good poignant questions. Don't be political. <laughs> but questions like, um, what's your favorite candy to eat when you're writing or not, not even that. What do you, what do you, what are your plans for the summer or what do you like to do in the summer or mm -hmm. things like that? That's what Diane Mills does. She, she's fabulous in doing that. It really it makes you feel like you're a part of it. It makes you feel like you're a part of her, of her world, which is exactly what the, exactly what you want their, your readers and your fans to feel like. So. And then, and then you want to go out and buy her books cause you feel like you know her. Well, we, we know her cause from Blue Ridge, mm -hmm. but, um, all that stuff goes in your book proposal in the marketing section, mm -hmm. but your focus should be relationships, not numbers. It's, it's, yeah. it's a, it's such a fine line. Mm -hmm. It really is. But I want to tell you, um, you asked me how doing this has changed my life. When I first started writing, I knew nobody except for maybe Lori and then Cecil Murphy and, um, I met a few other people 
And then I started going to writing conferences. And I know they cost money, but apply for scholarships, start saving a little bit of money now, ask people, hey, for, for my birthday, give to my my conference fund for Christmas gift to my conference fund (laughs) (laughs) so but what how it's changed is I I I am I I am an outgoing person I am not an introvert by any means I'm an extra extrovert (laughs) but But, that's why the two of us get along so well (laughs) but that's why that's why I've met so many people but I know a lot of introverts who know hundreds and hundreds of people now because they went to one conference and talked to people. It really is. It's and then it, it, and you, and you, and you join the conference Facebook page, join them on Twitter, join them on Instagram and people start following them and they see, and when you comment, they see who you are and then they'll start following you. I do that when people start commenting, I'm like, Ooh, who was that? I don't know them. I'm going to friend them because they're, I know they're safe because they're, they've been commenting on, you know, this the page that I've been following, but it, it's a great way. Great mm-hmm. way. It's, it's relationships. Mm-hmm. Now tell us a little bit more. Tell me a little bit more about your business. Um, what, what is it that the right proposal offers? What's, what's in different ways for people to get in contact with you? I have the right proposal has three services. Uh, it's an edit service. What I do with my, um, well, my edit services have two levels of edits. I have one level that is just sentence and line. It's like grammar and spelling and things like that. I have a pair of my intense level two editing is paragraph editing where Crystal Phelps is so wonderful. I give that stuff to her because she can do POV, deep POV. She, she, she does contextual editing along with all the grammar and everything. Mm -hmm. I have a review service, which I love because it's very helpful and it's very affordable. I have a checklist and in a detailed checklist of what Uh, publishers and agents look for in a book proposal. I spoke with publishers. I spoke with agents at the conferences and I asked them what they look for. And plus I did a lot of studying and I broke each section down into parts. And what I do is I take your book proposal and I compare and I contrast it with my detailed outline and I make comments, good comments. I, I don't make bad comments. I'm just like, you're missing this. Maybe you should have this. Um, it, it's it's a it's a lot of information. It's a really really good tool, and so I do that. And it's not that expensive. My prices actually are going to be going up in September. Um, my prices are actually extremely low compared to what everybody else charges. <laughs> I was told mm-hmm. you're charging too little. Maybe you should go up on your prices, but my, but, it, but I won't be that much more because I want people to get the service at a lower price, you know, like get platinum services at a, you know, mm-hmm. flame and yawn services at a hamburger price. <laughs> but my last service is create. And I have two levels of create where, and my motto for that is the more information you give me, the less you pay, but I have two. And one, you give me almost everything and I just create your proposal. The other one, you give me a, a lot of information. I need to get a lot of information, especially bio information and things like that. But what I do after that is I put it together and I also do the competitive analysis for you. So that, that, that's time consuming for the writer, but I can, I'll do it for them. So okay. that, that's why right. you compare what you have to the other books in the market, other books in the, in the, in that area. Yes. Yes. And what I do with all of my clients is I do a 30 minute, sometimes it turns into an hour, um, free consult to make sure I'm the person they want to work with to make sure that I can give them what they need. 
I, I really, I'm more of a coach too. I do the book proposal, but I do a lot of coaching too. I help people. I try not to tell them exactly where they need, if they're looking for an agent, because I don't, I know what a lot of agents are looking for, but I don't want to spe specify a certain agent. I might give them a few names because I don't want to seem like I'm playing favorites. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I know what some publishers want to, um, that's what I, I feel like I should keep my fingers on the pulse of what's going on out there because book, book proposals change sometimes, but I'm a coach too. And I'm a cheerleader. And for my Christian clients, I pray with them. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I do. I don't, I don't just do, do the book proposal and say, bye, see you later. I'm, they, they can contact me whenever they want. Um, email. If somebody has a question and they don't really need a complete book proposal, feel free to email me. I don't mind answering questions. And what was your email? What's the best way for people to contact you? Editor at the right w r i t e proposal dot com. Editor at the right proposal dot com. And you can go to the right proposal dot com. Check everything out. It's a clean and easy website. Um, it's very basic. It tells you exactly what you're going to get. If you have a question, just ask me. I'm very, very accessible, very easy to talk to. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, well, tell me a little bit about the project you guys. Tell me a little bit about the projects you're working on now. I know you've got a couple that you're in the middle of. <laughs> okay. The I have a book that I've been working on for a long time. This is this is the book that kind of got me into writing. It's I've changed the name. It's called Shine Don't Wine: The Quest for True Star Quality. Mm -hmm. It's my raw and realistic journey through the scriptures from complaining and whining to being obedient to the command of um, letting your light shine so before men that they see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Um, you know, there was a Bible verse that says, do everything without complaining and arguing so that you can shine like a star in the universe as you hold out the word of life. So this book kind of takes the reader on a journey from, it, it goes through the star, acrostic star. The S is see yourself as God sees you. The T is transform your mind with the word. And the A is always pray. And the R is refined to shine. It's very biblical, but it has um, good testimonial stories, some funny, some very realistic. But it's if you want to know who I am, when the book comes out, that's the book to read. Mm -hmm. Cause, because God took this me as a broken hating myself uh, person to, I really like who God is making me to be. And, and, and that's, you know, that's it my, one of my favorite, uh, favorite of your qualities is you, you literally live out the verse about letting the joy of God. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. yes. I'm yes. working I, I, the embodiment I, of that verse. So I would... Thank you. And, and uh, another project I'm working on with Jake McCandless and Angie, Angie Ruark is called Defying the Odds, 31 Prophecies Jesus Fulfilled. We take the Old Testament prophecy um, of Jesus and we compare it to the New Testament prophecy. Jake does the biblical aspect. I do an application aspect. And Angie is the mathematician and she's figuring out the odds of one person doing fulfilling that prophecy. There was a man named Stoner who did eight of them and nobody's finished his work. And so that's what we're doing. And we probably better hurry up and finish it so no one else steals our idea. But <laughs> but it's it's a book that I've always wanted. It's so hard. You know, you, you're, you're reading in the, the New Testament about a prophecy Jesus fulfilled. And then you're like, well, where was it? And if you don't have a study Bible, you don't know. And you're going back and forth, back and forth. And then I'm, and then I'm working on a fiction book. I never thought I'd write fiction. I'm excited about that one. I can't wait to read that one. It's called Accidental Findings. I'm, my son is helping me with it because there is a, my son is 16 and he has Asperger's. He's very high functioning autism. And my 
character in the book is going to be 14 years old and it's a boy with autism, high functioning. The character's based a lot on my son, but not a lot on my son. Mm -hmm. So when you read the book, it, it's, it's a murder mystery, abduction. There's going to be a lot of twists and turns. And I don't even know. I wish Diane Mills would write it with me. <laughs> Or Stephen James. <laughs> or Stephen James. It's got a great plot. It really does. It has a great plot. But I just, I just don't know how to. I've never written fiction before, but I'm learning. Lee, actually, I met her at the last year's. Uh, oh, Tosca would be great too. She's incredible, and she. Uh, it's so with Lynette Easton. So if you, if any of you are hearing me and you. And you want to help me? That would I would love it. <laughs> one of the great one. Her of the name would be first on the on the cover too, <laughs> by D Diane Mills or Lynette Easton. And, <laughs> and, and don't forget her son. <laughs> well, that's one no. of the greatest things Tosca told me was, um, you should just write. The best way to learn how to write a novel is to write a novel. Just just get it out and you, you learn as you go and you become a better person by the end of it. So that was, that was really good. She impressed on me. One of the best things that I learned from Cecil Murphy was that, mm -hmm. but I took one of his courses dancing with dialogue, how to write dialogue mm -hmm. and using action prompts and things like that. And I find that missing a lot in some of the proposals that I read. There was a lot of telling and not showing. Yes. And you can do that with um, dialogue. So that I love dialogue. And so my whole book is pretty much all dialogue. So now I have to fill it in. <laughs> Davis Bunn. I don't know if you were able to meet him. He wasn't at this year's Blue Ridge, but he was there. I've heard, he, I heard he's phenomenal. He, I, I was reading one of his novels. He is one of the best dialogue writers I've ever read. It just, it is Incredible. Maybe you can get him. Maybe you can get him on your show. That would be really good. He's he's an incredible writer. He really is. But that's one of the things. And he said that how he got good at it. He said his first book proposal that he sent in. He said he got word back. Said your dialogue is weak and your characters are two dimensional. And he said he worked. He took a tape recorder with him for four months and recorded every conversation he had and typed it out that night on paper. He did that for months. And now, I mean, if you read his books now, his dialogue is perfect, just flawless. So, yeah. One thing, one thing that I did for this, for this novel was I did, I watched a lot of TV mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was Diane, was it Diane Mills? I can't remember who said it, that when you watch TV, how would you write what's going on on the screen? How would you write it on paper? Hmm. Because when I when I write, I visualize and then I write when I'm visualizing in my head. I yeah, I'm a, I'm a very visual person too. I would I, I picture it and then write it down. So yeah, I, I like I like that as well. I, I really do. So this is probably going to be one of my last times for genre chat. I think we might be doing a few together mm -hmm. interviews together so if somebody wants to get a hold of you for genre chat how do they get a hold of you well my email address is uh, caleb walton 249 at gmail.com i'm also going to have a, a serious writer email hopefully sometime in the, in the near future um but yeah i mean i'm on social media that's my email address i'm very quick to respond um and i'm i'm honestly really excited this is a really really good adventure I'm, I'm eager to get at so it's 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 really wonderful god really has opened some really amazing doors for me especially especially through blue ridge which is how we met writers conference yep. and things like that so but definitely and i look forward to doing more doing more stuff together too that would be great that would be wonderful well thank you for having me on thank you so much for coming i really and truly enjoyed it i, I i'm sure everybody's going to find it really i learned a lot I, I learned a lot about proposals and stuff that i didn't know at the beginning but yeah thank you so much thank you so much for uh, for doing it with me and uh hopefully i'll see you see you soon and we'll we'll co-host some and, and you know. yes we will yes we will but you have a wonderful evening okay you too bye-bye bye-bye